Hi, I'm Barrett Haynes. I'm from Pell City, Alabama, and I have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Barrett was at a regular eight-year-old pediatrician checkup, um, heard a murmur, heart murmur that he'd never heard before, um, and said, I want, I want to have this looked at. Then we went to the cardiologist. Um, I was in pre-nursing classes, so I knew that it was taking a little longer than it should on the echo. And so he finally stopped and he said, I hate giving news to families like this on a Friday afternoon. So he tells us, you know, we diagnosed him with a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And I'm like, what? You know, what is what is that? You know, but uh, um, he goes into it and explains it to us and everything. And, uh, of course, what do we need to do? You know, one of the first things that, well, I don't want to play any more sports. It's hard to tell a kid, you know, you can't play sports. He was in, in the room when the doctor told us, and so, you know, he heard all of it, too. Um, but he was like, I still can play baseball, right? And I'm like, no, buddy, you can't. You know, of course, Barrett was very angry. You know, he'd be so angry, and I'm like, you can be mad at me. I'm saving your life. So they wanted to do genetic testing to see if um, just a gene from Jeremy and I caused Barrett to be the first. Um, so that's where we started, and it came back that I had it and then Kenley has the gene for it. So it skipped Riley and Ella Grace, and then Kenley has the gene. I don't have it, but I can develop it. And I learned about that when I, when I was eight and like that I didn't have it, but it could potentially, I could. I had a lot of mommy guilt because here we had four kids. <laughs> and I'd give it to two of them. It's just it's emotionally hard. I think you have to I think you have to grieve the life that you thought you were gonna have and process that. And then, you know, find find better paths for them. Uh, I I was very uh resentful, you know, when I was younger to you know, like my mom, I remember thinking, you know, how did I end up with this, you know? What well, we're going to have to change in life and find something different. We knew that he loved music, and so we were like, okay, we're going to give him something that he can stay focused on. Parents put me in guitar lessons when I was eight. I'd go in there every week and we would learn a song. And I just got to the point where I was learning them pretty well. He picked it up and just uh, slowly started learning and then he couldn't put it down, so. I guess I connected with guitar because I knew that I could sing and play guitar. first diagnosed, we were just like, okay, we're not doing any of this. And so then we kind of just gradually, you know, let him do a few things. We let him ride his bike and, you know, those kind of things around the neighborhood. He started hunting. Me and my grandfather, uh, he took me hunting the first time. Uh, I was right around 13. He asked me, he's like, hey, you know, I got a, I got a climbing stand. You think you, you know, want to try it out? And I was like, yeah, I'll try it, you know. Came to me and he was like, hey, I think I can see more deer if I get in a tree stand. Now I know that the tree stand entailed Barrett climbing the tree with the tree stand. I climbed up in the tree. I want to say I got about 15 to 18 feet up and I was getting tired. And I could tell my, my heart was beating really fast. I needed some water. My, I'd gotten cotton mouth. And I was like, I'm just going to, I'm just gonna stop and just sit down. And all of a sudden, it just, I just passed out. As I was passing out, I was kinda, uh, kinda um, uh, hollering out to him like, hey, hey, I'm, about, I'm passing, like I'm about to pass out and my, I could feel myself like slowing down. Then 
then we went for a, a checkup. Uh, he was 16 at the time. And um, that's when they told us that his heart had gotten really thick and that it was affecting the valves. Our cardiologist, he's like, it's time. And he said, we're going to look at valve replacement if we don't do it. After I had open heart surgery at 17, um, this song kind of made its way into my life. And uh, I sang this song two weeks after I had it. And uh, it's called Scars. Waking up to a new sunrise. They actually um, tore his aortic valve going through. And so they realized it when they took him off bypass. And so they put him back on and um, repaired that while they were still in there. His heart had to be shocked twice. And um, he had to receive an emergency med um, amnioneurone to um, get his heart started back. Um, he had a collapsed lung. Uh, but kids are so resilient. When he first went into surgery, I, I can remember, like, I would get tears in my eyes, like my brother's going back for surgery. And we all had to stand around his bed thinking, wow, he's about to really do this. Like, this is really happening. Like, this is really scary. Like, what's going to happen next? Because without them I wouldn't know your heart. And I know they'll always tell of who you are. So forever I am thankful for the sky. I think probably the most frightening thing of that whole situation was when I woke up with a tube, with a tube down your throat and wires coming out everywhere. All my family came in and they were talking to me, but I couldn't open my eyes and see them. It was so frustrating not being able to open my eyes and see everybody when I, when they got when they came in. I had surgery on a Thursday and I was playing guitar two weeks later, and that's when I st sang Scars. God's got a plan. You know, his plans are not our plans. Um, we're just fortunate that the right people were in our lives to help diagnose it. And God put them there. And, and He and He's, uh, you know, He's directed our path with everything that we've been through and what He's done. I've always tried to tell Barrett that, you know, this doesn't define who you are. It only makes you a better version of yourself. And so, um, you know, this is God's story. Just be the best storyteller that you can be. You never know what the future holds. You know, you could be here one minute, you be, you know, you could be gone the next, but that's with anybody, you know, not just people with ACM, you know, it's not, it's not a death sentence. If, if it was my time to go, then I, you know, I wouldn't be here. And it, it humbles you, you know, when you have, when you go through something like that. I am thankful, I'm thankful for the sky. So forever I am thankful for the sky.